This session today is about endometriosis and constipation. My name is Anastasia Hackler, am, or my husband calls me Hack. I am also an endo warrior myself, just myself, and a health coach, and a creator of um, a program called 90 Day Endo Hack Plan. It is a guided program that helps you address endometriosis symptoms with a holistic or whole body approach. Here are some facts about my background, my education. You can read all of that. If you have any questions for me, you can uh, ask them later. I'm not gonna bore you with all of that. But I have already brought up that I was not born in, and raised in the States and that English is my second language. So you guys have seen a lot of stuff that I had no idea even existed. So according to this very popular scientific journal everyone poops well everyone but you and i right and if you're watching me right now you are struggling with this i struggled with constipation since i could remember ended up with um, endometriosis on my bowels and on my bladder constipation was never fun and it um, makes so many and other endometriosis symptoms worse so a little disclaimer before we move on, we're going to discuss diet and lifestyle related constipation. If you have any major diagnosis like the um, bowel obstruction, bowel surgery, major bowel, bowel surgery, or if you have any pelvic floor um, problems that have been diagnosed, lazy bowel, please consult your doctor before you try to implement anything new or do anything new. So everybody has to poop daily, right? Because that's how we excrete all of the junk and the gunk and excess hormones and toxins and waste products out of our body. Stuff that doesn't belong that needs to go. By the way, while I'm on the slide, I'm going to answer the question that has been submitted prior to this live. It was about a supplement called DIM, which is a estrogen balancing supplement. The answer to that question is, if you do not have regular bowel movements, it is not recommended to take any hormonal balance supplements. Why? Because balancing, so that you understand, balancing is when the excess comes out. That's what balancing is, okay? So when it follows this green route, when it comes out either through urine or through poop, if it does not come out because you have constipation, it goes back to your system. It gets reabsorbed into your bloodstream. It gets recir recirculating and practically just poisoning your body. And the recirculation of hormones is a very important thing to consider if you have endometriosis because you probably heard about estrogen, right? We Estrogen dominance on an endometriosis journey. So estrogen gets excreted through poop or urine. And if you don't poop for three days, and if you don't produce enough urine for three days because you don't drink enough of water, so you have three days worth of excess extra estrogen floating in your body that is supposed to be out a long time ago. And as a result, we have too much estrogen. in our And when you take a, balance, a hormone balancing supplement like DIM, what happens is it does what it's supposed to. It pushes that extra estrogen out, but it doesn't come out because you don't poop. So you start housing all this extra estrogen in your body and you get all of these symptoms like blow and trouble sleeping and memory problems and those sound extremely painfully familiar right taking control of your bowel movements so that they become regular just by addressing water intake alone can resolve several of those issues i've been there i can attest to that and I'm all for one solution for multiple issues, as long as it is addressed naturally, it's um, in a, done in an intuitive way with how your body works. That is what a holistic approach is. And I know you're probably thinking, hold on, Anastasia, 
I thought that constip my constipation was caused by endometriosis or did the initially constipation cause endometriosis or was it the other way around? Well, in my opinion and from, from my experience, I can tell you that who came, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg, the endometriosis or the constipation, that, that is what we're talking about. Nobody knows. And we can either sit here and think about and be in that loop of, okay, what was caused and by what, or we can start addressing something and see if anything changes. I started having constipation when I was a child and we never drank enough water because water tasted horrible. Back then we didn't have any bottled water and we drank a lot of stuff that caused constipation and I will be talking about it later on. So it got progressively worse and at the age of 33, I was diagnosed with endometriosis stage four on my bowels and on my bladder. And uh, while I was on my hunt, you know, for holistic approach and the doctor offered me after the doctor offered me an excision surgery that um, wouldn't be able to remove all of the endo tissue from my bowels i was researching and when i saw this estrogen dominance research and constipation i started thinking about whether to get a surgery or not and my thought process was the following okay so i have this constant problem with constipation. If I go for the surgery, which the doctor is saying will not be optimal, uh, will it fix my constipation? Because if it doesn't fix my constipation and I still have it, then down, down the road, isn't it possible that my constipation will create favorable conditions for endometriosis to grow back? And then I'll need to have another surgery. So maybe why don't I try to address my chronic constipation with, you know, something natural, uh, stuff that I've been learning about and see if my pain goes away, if my constipation improves, if my hormone balance uh, kind of improves a little bit. And then if I don't have any pain, I don't need any surgery. So that's what I did. I, I went for the constipation route um, and I'm happy to report that I have been chronic constipation free since 2017 and that doctor is still waiting for my call about the sur about that surgery. So right now I'm share uh, in this video I'm going to share with you what has helped me, what kind of gave me some insights and aha moments and uh, after a lot of trial and error uh, things that I did to help with and, and to help with constipation. So if there's constipation, something causes it, right? We know that diet can cause constipation. So foods like white bread, pasta, sugar, pizza, ice cream, um, those are, you know about those. I'm not gonna talk about those. And if you have a question about any of the any of the above mentioned, just let me know. We'll talk about it. Today, I wanted to share with you things that maybe you don't realize that may cause constipation. And first, the first one of them is birth control. If you are on a progesterone birth control, progesterone like a mini pill, you're probably very constipated all the time. If you are not on a progesterone pill, you probably notice that uh, somewhere, sometime, you know, before your period, you just get constipated and no matter what you do, your bowels would not release. Whenever the progesterone levels naturally rise, we get constipated. So if we have an imbalance of hormones and taking birth control, um, we may get constipated with the progesterone rising. Though there is um, a study showing that it has been done on mice for now, but it's showing that it's a rather, it's estrogen rather than progesterone causes constipation. And oh my God, we have so much of, uh, of estrogen, right? Another one is antihistamines or allergy medication. 
Did you know that there are studies showing that women that have endometriosis are mo more prone to having an allergy? I, it's a, a very interesting <clears throat> coincidence, but I started having allergies the year I got my period. And I had to take antihistamines or anti-allergy medications from the age of 14 till I was 36 when I figured out how to fix that. Another thing that can cause you to get constipated are supplements like calcium and iron. You probably, you probably know about the iron. Oh, that iron pill plugs you up like nothing else. When it comes to food, the trio of dehydration, alcohol, black tea, and coffee, they just lead to dehydration. And uh, if you're not drinking more to compensate for what you're losing when you drink these kind of beverages, then your uh, stool gets hard, it, it gets uh, dry, and it's hard for your bowels to pass it, so you get constipated. And if you, if you are uh, one of those people that drink coffee and it makes them go, that's good for you. Coffee can produce a laxative effect, but if you get too much coffee, then you just dehydrate yourself even more. Caffeinated soda is um, a double whammy because it gives you a lot of sugar and also caffeine, and those two are not very good when it comes to con you know constipation. Things like unripe green bananas can plug you up, chocolate, uh, both milk and dry and dark and things like high protein diet when I jumped on the uh, endo healing train I, I, I told myself okay I'm gonna be doing protein shakes every morning and those protein shakes plugged me up because I was taking a lot and I was eating meat so um, if you if you are constipated, track your protein intake. Maybe you're taking too much. There is a lot of protein in some, um, you know, plant-based sources, and uh, we, you know, we need to track and make sure that we don't get too much. The same with high-fat diet. That's why when I see uh, women with endo are being recommended the keto diet, I cringe because high protein, high fat equals constipation and it's not good for endometriosis. Another thing that may, con may constipate you that you don't realize is too much fiber. You probably heard that, oh, constipation need fiber, fiber, fiber. Everybody talks about fiber, but there is such thing as too much fiber if you're not drinking enough water with it. If you are on a plant-based diet, for example, a cup, one cup of chickpeas, is 35 grams of fiber already. Your daily required value is like 30. So just by eating one cup of chickpeas, you met your daily requirement plus. So if you're eating something else it cre and you consume a lot of fiber and you're not drinking enough of water, you will get constipated. Um, or if you, for example, never ate any fiber and then you eat a lot, uh, you know, in one go, that's not good either. Fiber needs to be fiber needs to be introduced gradually. Another thing is white rice, and endometriosis warriors rely on white rice because it doesn't cause any food sensitivities. It's kind of gentle on the stomach. It's bland. If you have nausea, um, you eat, you want to eat it. Um, doctors recommend it. Like if you have diarrhea, doctors recommend it because it plugs you up. If you are struggling with constipation and you're crying, basically crying on the toilet every time, now you know what else can contribute, you know, and I'm not done yet. I'll, I'll show you some other cool stuff. But if this applies to you, if you can reduce um, things that contribute to your constipation or just increase the water intake to counteract stuff like that, and sometimes water water doesn't work, and I'll show you I'll show you when and why. Because water is the most underestimated, but it's the most affordable way of relieving constipation. 
why water because if you don't have water your bowels will not move they must have water dry colon does not move and if you don't drink enough your body still pulls water into the colon but it draws it from different organs and here you can see the water content of different organs in your body they are like a backup plan for your bowels so they get they um, give the water to the bowels when you don't drink enough and what happens is if your lymphatic system let me, you see it's 95 percent water if your lymphatic system gets dehydrated because you don't drink enough you it gets sluggish it gets slow you get all of the nasty stuff like bloat and gas and weight gain that does not go away you'll start having low energy skin problems joint problems and uh, and staying sick longer because lymphatic system is your immune system it carries all of the cellular waste it carries all of the bacteria and virus viruses the waste from those toxins and it needs to come out so if it doesn't you get all the problems and since it's part of immune system you get sick longer and you get sick more often so if that's the case with you you may have a very slow lymphatic system. In my program, we work a lot with lymphatic system. Other um, organs can also be affected. So you can get dry skin, dry, dry hair. And very important one is blood. When the blood gets thick because you don't drink enough water, it start it carries oxygen to your organs but it get it does it slowly so you get things like fatigue you get heart problems you get stress and if you are dehydrated while you are on your period you will get even more painful uh, cramps and more discomfort so water just one thing you know it can address the replenishment of your blood of your lymph uh, better circulation better toxin and bacterial removal, less UTIs, ladies, on top of helping with constipation. And that is the whole body approach that creates a positive chain of reaction. On the contrary, let's talk about laxatives. Taking a laxative just to help you go poop without addressing your uh, regular water intake is a is a one-step approach because laxative addresses constipation and only constipation and it addresses it mechanically so it still pulls water to your colon and pushes your stool out and you will have a bowel movement and that's a big question sometimes but your body will be depleted of you know will will keep being depleted of the water resource and if you take laxatives every day to help you poop and not replenish your water supplies, you will get very dehydrated and, and taking laxatives very often also can create a lazy bowel syndrome. Your bowels will stop just pooping on its own. Don't get me wrong, sometimes we need that laxative, especially if we just had a surgery or if you're in a situation that I was in very, very often when you don't go for several days and then you kind of get that urge and you go and you sit on the bathroom and you know, and you strain and you strain and you know that it's coming, but it's painful. And you realize that whatever is coming is like five times bigger than your anus. And you know that it will be extremely painful and you're crying and it's bleeding and you kind of push it back so that um, maybe tomorrow it will sh get smaller in size and you can pass it. In that situation, of course, I would take a laxative myself so that I can get rid of that stuff and then start doing something that is good for me. Because water, you know, much better and much safer. Another question that I got, and I have an answer, I tried to answer it, and it's a long answer, but I drink a lot of water every day, 
and still nothing. Well, let's see what can be missing. Okay. So there are factors that do impact the effectiveness of water for the chronic constipation relief. There is this thing as too much water. What happens is when you drink too much water, you lose potassium and, pot and the potassium deficiency makes your stool dry and hard. And that stool is hard to move down, down the line. So everybody has different water intake requirements. It, it's based on, you know, all kinds of different factors. The um, general guidance is 64 ounces. So 64 ounces is minimum. You can also look at your urine color and see in, in the toilet if you are dehydrated or not, or if you are overhydrating yourself. Like if your urine is constantly clear, it means that you're drinking a, a way more than you need and you're losing nutrients. So very pale, pale yellow is you know the best. Everything else is kind of a sign of dehydration but then you don't have the problem of going, you know, you don't have that problem that I'm drinking a lot of water and nothing. It's not too much water anymore. If you don't want to play a guessing game and see, okay, am I de dehydrated? Am I hydrated? You can use, like, I like using all kinds of different strips that you can um, check your urine with. And besides dehydration level, they can tell you all kinds of other parameters that are pretty cool to just see what, what your health is is doing. But track your water intake. I know I hear it a lot that, oh, I drink a lot of water and I cannot poop. Well, ladies, if estrogen causes memory problems, and we all have memory problems. Sometimes I don't remember what I ate for lunch yesterday. And very often when I think that I drank enough, it is way far from the truth because when I start tracking, I'm like, oh my God, I thought I drank a lot, but apparently I did not. There are so many different apps out there that are free that you can use to track your water consumption and you will see whether you drink enough I mean, too much or not enough because it applies the constipation and water. They help, they help each other only if you drink water every single day. Another thing that uh, can impact the effectiveness of water when it comes to constipation is what foods do you usually eat? Do you um, eat foods that take longer to digest? For example, here I um, gave you some examples of red meat, nuts, and cheese. It takes four to five hours for that to digest. Chicken, beans, chickpeas, two to three hours. So if you are always using foods that take long to digest and you are drinking cold water or any kind of beverage with that, it solidifies the fats, it helps, I mean, it makes those foods stay in your stomach longer. And what happens is you get constipated because the size of your stomach, when it's stretched, it's around one quart or like um, one liter. So when you eat something that takes longer to digest and then you add water on top of it, your stomach cannot stretch anymore. So what happens is that water pushes your meat or whatever you're eating that is, has not been processed yet out from your stomach into the intestine. And when it is not digested properly, you get gas, you get bloat, and you get constipated. And I know it is so hard um, to change our habits because we have been conditioned for so many years to drink with food, to drink before food, to drink after food. If you go to a restaurant, you know, you get drink order before your food comes and then you get your food and you keep getting refills 
and then by the time you get to the car, your food will already be in your small intestine when it needs to stay in your, in your stomach for a couple of in three or four hours longer. So try to avoid drinking while you are eating. That way, let the food soak up all the gastric juices so that it can get broken down and you don't get constipated. I love drinking warm water and changing the, um, changing the temperature of the water has turned my healthy journey upside down. I loved the effect of the water, temperature of the water because it prepares your stomach for food. Like I drink my tolerably warm water before meals. So it prepares the stomach for food. It helps break down the food faster. It soothes your stomach and relaxes it so that it's ready to receive that food. Um, other, other, you know, because if you drink something cold, it kind of gets numb. And it also helps soothe your menstrual cramps if you are, if you are on your period when you're drinking it. Also, whenever you uh, heat up the water, it removes the chlorine from it and it makes the water alkaline. And alkaline, alkalinity helps the consistency of your stool. So it's not harsh and it's not dry. So it's easier for your bowels to, uh, to process and to pass that stool. Another thing that we may not realize is if dehydration causes constipation basically because there is not much water and everything is dry. If, if, um, if you're using a heating pad only when you're constipated, it, may, it might actually help you relieve that constipation because that heat on the belly for 10 minutes, you may go to the bathroom. But we don't do it for just 10 minutes whenever we are constipated, right? And I was there myself, I'm <clears throat> guilty as charged but the, we keep that heating pad on us for a long period of time. And it also sucks that moisture out of your body. And you get dehydrated. So you need to drink even more if you're using, if you're using heating pads. But one more danger that I want to mention here, it has nothing to do with constipation, but whenever you have a prolonged direct heat, on top of your abdominal cavity, what happens is your blood vessels get extended, so they get dilated. And the longer they stay dilated, it sends the signal to your body saying, hey, something is wrong. And that creates an inflammatory effect. And do we need inflammation in the belly? No, we don't need inflammation in the belly because inflammation is what causes adhesions. Yes, you heard me right. Inflammation causes adhesions. Adhesions form as a normal healing process. So whenever there's inflammation, adhesions are the result of that healing. And if you have adhesions in your, in your belly or around your bowels, and they create different creases and um, all kinds of, uh, you know, different issues for your bowels to move that can also be the problem if you're still drink if you're drinking a lot of water and still nothing regarding constipation look into magnesium deficiency magnesium is the um, mineral that helps bowels relax and magnesium draws water to your bowels if you only rely on magnesium from foods I have to disappoint you. With the farming practices that are going on right now, we are all magnesium deficient because our soil is depleted and we cannot get enough with food. We'll have to. We would have to eat a lot of food to get the magnesium that we need. If you are on birth control or have been on birth control for a while, you are magnesium deficient. So you can always check the levels of magnesium. This, this strip for the urine that I use also um, checks for magnesium deficiency and I was taking magnesium and I was still magnesium deficient so I had to up my dose 
and now I found the form that I really like. There are different forms. Your doctor can tell you what they are if you are magnesium deficient. You will kind of have to try different ones to see which one works for you. My favorite magnesium is magnesium malate. It works for my nervous system, so I sleep better. I don't have the restless legs. I have const I have regular bowel movements, and it also helps bond to the heavy metals and excreted from my body. So that's a big plus for me. And it's a highly bioavailable form. So you can look it up if you want to. Another thing that causes bowels not to move, even if you're drinking a lot of water, is vitamin D deficiency. There was a study uh, showing the link between the, the vitamin D deficiency and the ability of bowels to move, literally. So it affects their motility. And it's linked to, if you are deficient, it's linked to depression and anxiety. And oh my goodness, we have a lot of that with endometriosis. And due to the connection between your brain and your gut, if your brain gets depressed, your gut gets depressed. And if it's depressed, it's not produced, it's not processing food, it's not moving. So look into the vitamin D deficiency, see if your doctor can check your levels and keep them at a good level, ask your doctor. Another thing that can contribute to you not being able to go when you are drinking a lot of water is your muscles, uh, pelvic muscles, are they weak or are they hypertonic or too tense? If you have been straining and straining for, for a long time, and if you had a baby or if you had any kind of pelvic surgery, you are probably dealing with weak pelvic muscles and it's just hard for them to contract, to move, to move your bowels, even, even if you drink a lot of water. If you have fibroids or endometriosis, your, your muscles can be too tense so for you to go, they need to relax. So it's like they hold poop hostage. A pelvic specialist, pelvic floor specialist can advise you on whether yours are weak or hypertonic, or you can try different exercises. This is, this is very easy to fix with different exercises. In my program, we do just as a preventative measure, different pelvic um, muscle exercises, and it seems to help. Um, ladies with the constipation. Another thing, are you drinking enough water for the season? So if it's cold outside and it's so hot inside from all the heaters running, you need to drink more than, than what you're drinking. If it's hot outside and you sweat a lot, you need to drink again more. So, so if you see if you are taking this into consideration when you think that you drink a lot your period. Um, during your period, your f hormones fluctuate. They're all over the place. And uh, when they fluctuate, it makes you thirsty. So you probably notice that when you are on your period or close to your period, you kind of get that constant thirst. So drink more when you're on your period or you'll end up with even more cramps and pain. Another thing that needs to be taken into consideration is consistency. Remember that chart with the percentage of water in different organs? Well, consistency matters because if you don't drink enough, your body, your body will pull water from somewhere else and then you all of a sudden start drinking and expect it to work, but your, your body kind of has to repay all of those organs first that gave that had given the water before so if you are not consistent if you drink a gallon today and nothing for three days it's not going to make you poop you need to be consistent so the last two are stress it doesn't matter how much you drink it doesn't matter what supplements you take you may even have laxatives by gallons if you are stressed it will be extremely hard for you to poop. So stress management and addressing stress and how you react to stress is very, very, very important. If you need help with that, if you don't know how to even approach that, or you, or you don't even understand where stress is coming from, I have a three-day workshop that can help you answer all those questions 
with my feedback as a coach. The last thing is interesting because I bet you ne never even thought about that, but check your cabinets. Do you have anything that has hyaluronic acid in it, whether it's creams, supplements, or those uh, fancy collagen powders? Hyaluronic acid is a very good for joints. That's why um, some endometriosis warriors take it for joint pain. It's good for your skin, it's good for your hair, it makes everything plump and nice and subtle, sub supple. But hyaluronic acid is extremely thirsty. For it to work, it needs to pull water towards it. And it can hold almost a thousand times its weight in water. To help you understand that better, if you take one chia seed, and just a little bit chia seed, but if you put it in water, it will swell, it will increase in size, and that's what hyaluronic acid does. It does not produce water, but it needs water to work. So it will pull water from the inside, from your body. So when I tried the collagen powder, I couldn't, I couldn't understand why I was constipated. I thought, okay, well, maybe it's the protein again, but then, I, I realized that no, it's the protein and hyaluronic acid and me not drinking enough water. So that's kind of like all at once. So look at all these factors and see if one or a combination of those apply to you just to understand why you don't go to the bath bathroom regularly, even though you're drinking a lot of water. Uh, another question that I received about water is, do you use a water filter or add minerals to your water? That is a good question. Yes, I prefer uh, using filtered water rather than tap water. Toxins around us and toxins on an endometriosis journey is a whole new story. Let me know if you'd like a life on that. I like using a per PUR carbon filter, either like a faucet filter or a um, and I don't use minerals. I don't add minerals to my water, not anymore. I used to. I used to um, use like coral powder for the minerals, but I felt like that kept me constipated, so I stopped. And now I'm adding things um, that are whole foods, like organic lemon, organic lime, apple cider vinegar for the purpose of minerals, vitamins, and enzymes combined. And when I travel, I take liquid oxygen with me so that I can purify and kind of freshen up the water that I cannot control the quality of when I'm on the go. Okay, so besides everything that was mentioned, there was a lot of um, kind of hidden solutions. There are other things that can help you relieve constipation, but today we're focusing on water. And if you just add water, consistently to your endometriosis routine, you might even realize that you don't need anything else. But if you're like me and you're thinking, okay, sure, but the thing that she did not share today will probably be the one that will help me the most. No, it won't. If you don't address your consistent water intake, nothing will matter. You can find the best, you know, magnesium and supplement, and you can be vitamin, you, 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 um, like if you have no vitamin deficiency, but if you don't consume water, you will not address your constipation, no matter what you do. Wow, that was a lot of information. Thank you so much for hanging in there with me. I hope this information was helpful. I hope it was easy to understand. Give me your feedback. I would like to, li to listen to your feedback, but to sum it up, constipation needs a whole body approach because it affects your whole body, just like endo does. They're like Twinkies, you know? But it all requires consistency. So whatever tool you use and choose, you need to be consistent with it because if you want to be regular, you have to do things regularly.